How do the difficult and challenging seasons of our lives grow and mature us more spiritually? And how can we use those times to see God's love and grace more clearly? Today I'm going to talk about that as we study John 15 and we're going to see the importance of God's pruning in our lives and we're also going to talk about what it means to abide with Jesus as we walk through our daily Christian lives. Please join me today as we study John 15. Many of us are familiar with John chapter 15, where Jesus talks about being the true vine and talks about his father being the vine dresser. In John 15 verse 2, it says this, Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. When you think back on a difficult time in your life, maybe you were stressed out, maybe you were full of anxiety, maybe you really felt challenged or it was a dark time in your life, you definitely didn't feel blessed by it, I can assure you. Maybe you're going through a time like that right now. In all honesty, this is probably a really good time for me to talk about this as a good reminder to myself because I've been going through a challenging time recently as I've experienced multiple different health challenges that have left me feeling anxious, stressed out, frustrated, and like I'm really navigating somewhat of the unknown as I'm going forward and trying to find some answers and get some relief from some of the challenges that I've been having. When we face times that are challenging, situations in our life that seem nearly impossible, or when we feel overcome with frustration or anger or anxiety, we really need to step back and instead of feeling upset at God, upset at ourselves or our loved ones, or anxious or resentful, try to think about how we can grow closer to God through these times, how we can deepen our relationship in Christ, and what the Lord is trying to show us and teach us. It doesn't mean that because you're going through something bad in your life or you're having challenges that you're being punished or that you've done something wrong. Pruning serves a purpose. Now I myself am not a wine connoisseur but I've known people in my life that were and when these people have a good glass of wine they can really appreciate the depth and complexity of the flavor of the wine and sometimes they even ask what grapes they were, what vineyard they came from, what area of the country they're from, and if they're an avid wine connoisseur sometimes they even know the answer to some of these questions the interesting thing about growing grapes is that the pruning process is incredibly important to make sure that your vines can produce the optimum amount of grapes and to make sure that the grapes reach their full maturity and they have the sweetest flavor and taste possible and in order to do that you have to make sure that you're pruning the grapes regularly if the grapes do not get pruned, the vines will become overgrown with foliage and they will look full but instead of being full of fruit, they'll just be full of leaves and foliage that will basically do nothing and eventually the vine that the grapes are growing on won't produce grapes anymore at all. Even though initially it may look like they're cutting things off and they might be removing more foliage than necessary, it actually in the end produces a fuller, more abundant grapevine than if they don't prune at all. So it's incredibly important and I think the same is really true in our Christian lives. No matter what your hardships might be, whether they be medical issues like I'm dealing with, whether they be financial issues, family issues, marital issues, issues at your job, whatever the case, God knows what those issues are and he's not trying to punish you. He's not trying to harm you. These are things in our life that happen just because we simply live in a sinful world, but they can help us grow closer to the Lord. And with every painful experience that we go through in life, there is a lesson that can be learned and there is maturing that can happen spiritually as we navigate that difficult time if we abide with Christ. And that is really the key. John 15 talks about how important it is to abide in Christ. And I have to say, I could not navigate the difficult and challenging seasons of my life without abiding in Christ. And I'm sure a lot of you would feel the exact same way as me and would say the same thing. J.C. Ryle was an evangelist and preacher in the 1800s and his definition of abiding in Christ I really think says it best. This is how J.C. Ryle describes abiding in Christ. To abide in Christ means to keep up a habit of close, constant communication with Him to always be leaning on Him, resting on Him, pouring out our hearts to Him, and using Him as our fountain of life and strength, our chief companion and best friend. Can you imagine 
having a best friend that you look at and lean on like that who actually has the power to change the circumstances in your life that trouble you the most. What an amazing gift we have in abiding in Christ. I love the descriptive language that J.C. Ryle uses in his definition of abiding in Christ. He talks about a habit of close and constant communication. When we look at the definition of abiding in Christ that J.C. Ryle gives, would you say that you've developed that habit of constant and close communication with Christ on a daily, hourly, and maybe even minutely basis? Is that a pattern and a habit that you've developed in your life? When I read this definition of abiding in Christ, I definitely know that I have a lot of work to do and a lot more that I could be doing to strengthen my relationship with the Lord and abide in Christ more deeply. And it really motivates me to dig deeper and to have that closer companionship and that closer and more intimate communication and communion with my Lord and Savior. And I hope it does the same for you. I can't speak for anyone else but myself when I tell you this. I could never have made it through the challenging, dark, and difficult situations and circumstances that I've faced throughout my life, and I've been through several of them without abiding in Christ. And each time that I went through a situation like that, and I made the choice to abide in Christ and grow in my spiritual walk and ask God, what are you trying to show me in this circumstance? How can I grow in you? How can I trust you more through the challenges that I'm facing? I came out the other side of my challenge of my circumstance feeling stronger spiritually, feeling blessed and understanding that the Lord was using my trial to strengthen me in my faith and really gaining a greater understanding and a greater depth and perception in my spiritual walk with the Lord and it really has blessed me and it's only through abiding in Christ that we can bear the good fruit that John 15 talks about. John 15 verse 8 tells us this, by this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. In John 15 verse 8 we see another reason why abiding in Christ is so important because it's impossible to bear the good fruit that Jesus commands us to bear as Christians as his disciples without that close communion and relationship of abiding in Christ. And what good fruit are we supposed to be bearing as Christians? To get a clear illustration and picture of what our life should look like when we abide in Christ Let's take a look at Galatians 5 verses 22 through 26. Galatians 5 verse 22 is a well-known and often recited passage by many Christians and it's known as the fruit of the Spirit verse and it says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. A lot of times when we look at this verse, we're looking only at this verse and talking about the different attributes or different fruits of the Spirit, but I want to go on and finish the rest of the chapter through 26. So let's take a look at verses 23 through 26. This is what these verses say. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Now the reason I think verses 23 through 26 in Galatians 5 are important when we're talking about the type of fruit that our life should bear and what should be evident in our lives when we abide with Christ is because it talks about certain attitudes and also a willingness to put aside our own desires and our own fleshly passions in order to really bear witness to Christ and in order to put others ahead of ourselves. It talks about us not being selfish and not being conceited, but really having an attitude of humility and really having an attitude where we want to show others that we abide in Christ. My prayer for you today is that as you mature and grow in your faith, you continue to develop the habit of abiding in Christ as you seek to nurture that close communication and continual relationship with Jesus and you look to him as your very best friend and your closest companion because only then can we find the true joy that only Jesus can bring.